Hey guys, Stealth here. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to defend your turret. It's something that I was struggling a lot with when I started out with this game, and that's because I built my turrets like this. This is a cheap and really basic, simple ship that I've designed, and what I used to do is say, okay, I want to have a turret on this part of the ship. So, we're going to be building a new turret, and it's going to be, let's say, a simple cram cannon. We're going to throw in a couple of connectors. We're going to throw in a firing piece and um, a barrel. Then, I want this thing to be protected, so how do I do that? Um, oh, I know. I'll just throw on some metal. And by doing that, the thing will be protected. Let's make that uh, 4 meter downward slopes, so it has a bit of angling on it. And go the other way as well. One there, and one more there. Now, does this work? Maybe. The turret can freely turn. That is definitely true. But you're dealing with a very, very sizable turret. And this is without any kind of expansions on it. Now, the first thing, or the first error that I made, is trying to build the turret on top of the deck. That is not where your turrets need to go. Your turrets need to start below the deck. That is where you want to start building your turrets, because that is where most of the turret is actually going to be. The top section of the ship, or the deck section, that is only where you're going to be looking at the, let's say, the end of the turret. So, I'm going to be leaving open a small 3x3 three three area, and by doing so, that will be the area where my turret can move around. So, you start out with this 3x3 three three gap. I'm going to add a new 1-axis turret to the bottom. And you can see that it's actually sitting below decks. Currently it's the bottom of the ship. You could have as many decks below or above this as you like. Especially with large battleships where you want to have advanced cannons which have a lot of long missile racks, or sorry, uh, shell racks, you're going to be looking at a very, very large and deep turret section spanning through possibly multiple decks. Alright, then we're going to go back to the cram cannon. Pretty much built the same design. So let's say three connectors, one firing piece, and you can actually even go as low as this. And by doing this, you can then throw in the barrel. Then we're going to armor it, which normally isn't the first piece that I do, but let's just go for it. So make sure that mirror mode is on. There we're going to throw in some triangle covers, a downward slope, and well, let's just go with a couple of downward slopes here. One there. Whoops. I always mess this up. One there. We're going to go with a couple of square corners. Uh, or actually, these need to be triangles. There. And then you can fit one last metal block in there. Now, this is nice. This is looking a little smaller, a little better. But it's still not quite where I want it to go. So, we're going to, again, excavate this turret. Break it down. And then actually start properly building it up. So, this is my let's say stripped down turret. What I want it to be able to do is rotate inside this 3x3 three three section. Now, the amount of damage that it does is quite pathetic for a cram cannon. So we're going to be adding on some, let's say, high explosive pellets. I know you can use autoloaders for this, so in order to get more bang for your buck, you need to connect them to an autoloader. I'm going to go for a manual orientation autoloader, and you can see it's sitting below the deck it is not sitting on top of the deck, it is actually below decks, where it should be a little safer. Throw in some high explosive pallets, and let's say another auto loader, because right here I cannot throw in any more. The front side actually is going to be used for ammo boxes, two there. Then I want to have one bit of hardener pallets, and I want to have one bit of EMP pellets. Now the turret is actually starting to do damage. 80 kinetic, 431 explosive, 1 EMP, no fragmentation damage, IP value of 4. 
and everything is still below decks. Of course you could say, well, this is nice, but I want to have a slightly bigger caliber. I want to go with a gauge increaser. You can do that. You can just throw these in down below, make sure they're connected. And we're going to throw the last one in there. Now, so long as you stick to that 3x3 shape, you can see that this thing can actually freely rotate. It does have quite the kickback because at this stage I don't have any recoil compensating barrels at it yet. But it does do the job. Then, last step, defending it. That's what we came here for. Now, we can still go for pretty much the same layout. We can still go for uh, the thing that I set up before. So downward slopes there. I'm going to go with the triangle corner there. Like that. Uh, triangle corner one. Like that. And a metal block. And to top it all off, we're going to go with one more downward slope. Like that. And that is how you can design a basic turret. The things that you need to be on the lookout for is that you make sure that this area, the below decks area, doesn't get too large. If I add a few more blocks right now, then it should still be able to rotate, so long as it doesn't run into anything. So let's say that I want to have, um, what can I reliably throw on here without breaking it? At the moment I have no room for anything. So let's just go with, let's say, a six-way connector. If I move, do it like this, you can see it's below decks, and it, below decks it has enough room to move around. It can still move around without running into anything. But the more you start to add to this thing, the more it's going to be difficult to maneuver it. There just ran into the side of the ship. The starboard wall of the ship, or the starboard hull side, is now preventing this thing from turning around. So you got to make sure that if you build your turrets below decks, you don't make this thing too big. You need to make sure you know exactly how much room you have, and for simple, um, let's say simple calculations or simple measures, I usually stick with a 3x3, 5x5, 7x7 setup. This way you can make sure that you have exactly the room that you need without getting too large. Now, the next part could be defending this thing even further. And for that I'm going to be covering this uh, turret, let's say the turret base, in metal parts. So that if something hits, um, and it is likely to hit a ship at some point, you don't immediately get all of your ammo boxes blown up. Now it can still move around freely, it can still do so without getting damaged, and it can take quite a bit of damage to the ship or to the hull without taking too much damage to the turret. Now there is one bit that I don't quite like yet, and that's that you can still see a little bit of the gauge increasers from the turret. In order to do that, we're going to need to make the turret a bit higher. It has to be sitting slightly above the deck. So we're going to throw off these parts. I'm going to say I want to have one more cram connector, then the firing, whoops, then the firing piece. And now we can actually cover this up with some more metal. Metal block there, another metal block there, one there and one there. Back to the cram cannons, back to the barrels. And again, armoring. Now, you can make this thing in any way, shape or form that you like. That's the beauty of FTD. You can turn it into a very heavily angled piece. You can turn it into a more block-like piece. Should have turned on mirror mode there. Now, I am not exposing anything of the deck or anything of, let's say, the turret shaft, the, the turret gangway that's sitting below the turret itself. Now, don't let the uh, waves fool you. The ship is quite stable, but the moment I start uh, firing, it could start to flip over the ship. And this is how you do it. The main design thing that you need to be taking away from this video is that you need to start thinking about your turret below decks. The turret starts as low as you want it to be. Make sure that all of the vulnerable parts are not above decks because that's going to make for a very very large and possibly top-heavy ship. Make sure you start below decks. 
And again, you can make this as large as you want. To indicate that, let's have a quick look at one of the ships that is built into the uh, game. We're going to be looking at the Bismarck, which is one of my favorite ships. Here's Bismarck. These are the turrets, and as you can see, they are significant. They have advanced cannons, and these advanced cannons start out in the turrets. This is where the firing piece is, this is where the gauge connectors are. But they go down a long way. The turret that I was using went down, I think, three blocks. This thing goes down for days. It is a very, very large turret shaft. You can see it is protected by a lot of wood, and not just that, there's probably all sorts of armor surrounding it even further. But it is very, very large. The more you start to up the gauge of your turrets, especially for the advanced cannons, the more you'll need to be, uh, bring a large ship. You'll need to make sure that this thing has size. And again, you can see that this thing is quite narrow the higher you go. It gets bigger the lower you go, and that's fine. All that we want is for this thing to be able to turn smoothly, and by doing so, um, the only part of the turret that's really exposed is the barrels, the upper side of the turret, and all of this is hull-sized metal. So there you have it. That is how you can defend your turrets. I hope it was helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are. If it was helpful, please give it a like so I can get this video out to more people. If you have any requests for custom videos, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you have any questions about the game, uh, please feel free to ask those and I'll see if I have the answer for you. For now, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and good luck building your own turrets.